cat called Lucky. Jem, the outrageous pop star, turned on the mini TV that was set in the dashboard of her car, the Rockin' Roadster. The handsome face of Eric Raymond appeared on the screen. Yuck, said Jem, pulling a face. Didn't realize they were showing horror films. Eric Raymond was the scheming music executive who wanted to prove that his group, the Misfits, were better than Jem and the Holograms. His ultimate aim was to take complete control of Starlight Music. The snag with his plans was that the Misfits were, quite simply, lousy. I understand that Starlight will soon be issuing new singles by the Misfits and Gem and the Holograms, said the TV reporter. That's right, smiled Eric smoothly. The Misfits single will be totally new and exciting. And what about Gem's single? asked the reporter. Well, Gem does tend to copy the Misfits rather than produce new material, said Eric. Still, you can't blame her for copying the best. Turn that set off before I gag exclaimed Kimber Benton, who was sitting next to Jem. What does Eric mean? Continued the hologram's keyboard player. Us copy them. Well, we could sing out of tune and play our instruments badly, laughed Jem. The pop star tossed her head back and launched into a misfit song, taking care to hit all the wrong notes. The wind whistled through her pink hair as the rockin' roadster roared down the road. Kimber grinned then joined in the chorus, pitching her voice in a different key so that the sound was dreadful. It was just like the Misfits. Suddenly, a small cat raced into the middle of the road. The creature turned its head in the direction of the fast-approaching roadster, but seemed rooted to the ground with fear. Hold tight, Timber! shouted Jem as she gripped hard on the steering wheel. The roadster screeched to a halt inches away from the cat. Thanks to Jem's expert driving, the animal was safe. She okay? Asked Kimber. Reckon she's used up all her nine lives at one go. Said Jem, who was already by the cat's side. But she looks fine to me. Still shaking with fear, the cat jumped up into Jem's arms where it instantly settled down. There was a badly scratched collar around the cat's neck. The letters L-U-C could be clearly seen. Bet your name's Lucky, isn't it? said Kimber to the cat. The cat meowed as if in agreement. Well, Lucky, said Jem, it's time for you to make your way back home. The pop star put the cat down and went back to the rockin' roadster. The girls waved to Lucky as the car pulled away. The cat watched them for a second, then bounded into action. The roadster pulled up at a set of traffic lights, and next second there was an extra passenger on the back seat. Lucky! Chorus the girls. You know something, Jem? I think Lucky rather likes you. I think so, too, said Jem, trying not to laugh as the cat balanced his front paws on her shoulder and licked her face. The girls decided that Lucky should stay with them until her owner was found. Jem was giving a live TV interview the following day. It would be a good time to mention the cat and hope that her owner was watching. Wonder if you are a lucky cat? Kimber asked Lucky. Will you make our new single outsell the Nasty Misfits record? That's nothing to do with luck, said Jem decisively. That's all about making the best disc and being the best band. The roadster pulled up outside the offices of Starlight Music. As the girls entered the building, they met Eric Raymond. I heard your interview, said Jem icily. Thanks for putting in a good word for us. Everyone knows that your group is second rate said Eric, looking smug. You shouldn't be called the Holograms. You should change your name to the Copycats. Whether it was the mention of the word cat, or whether it was because Lucky didn't like Eric, it was difficult to say. But the cat suddenly arched her back and hissed menacingly. Eric had not seen Lucky curled up in Jem's arms. Get that thing away from me, snarled the normally cool and unflappable record executive. I don't like the look of her. Feelings mutual, sweetie, said Jem as she made her way into the building. Hey, I've never seen Eric look so worried, laughed Kimber. He almost looked, well, frightened. Kimber, said Jem with a smile. How can you say such a catty thing? 
Up in Eric Raymond's executive office, Pizzazz carelessly knocked over her bright green nail varnish and watched the patterns it made as it trickled over Eric's desk. She, Roxy and Stormer, had been summoned to an urgent meeting by Eric Raymond. Where is that dumb crumb? demanded Pizzazz. Next second, Eric stormed into the office. There was something about his angry scowl which made even the misfits scramble to their feet and look alert. Right, girls, he said crisply. Operation Copycat is underway. Who's doing the copying? asked Pizzazz. Jim is, smiled Eric. For the last few weeks, I've been telling all the media people that Jem can only copy us, continued Eric excitedly. Now we are going to rush release our record into the shops. A few days later, Jem will bring out her new single and it will sound the same as ours. But, but, but... Began Stormer uncertainly. Save the brain cells, Stormer, and listen to me, said the Power Mad producer. Jem is going to record her single in the Starlight Studios this afternoon. But something will disturb her, and I will borrow the run-through tapes. Why? Asked Stormer simply. Because we will listen to them, then change round a few lyrics and a few chords and record our version of the song. Jem won't know a thing about it. And our song will hit the shops first, so people will think that Jem copied us. That's all very clever, Eric, said Pizzazz. But what's going to disturb Jem and stop her finishing her recording? I am, said Eric, his brilliant white teeth glinting as he gave a sickly smile. Within a few weeks, everyone will agree that Jem and those horrible holograms are just a load of cheapskate copycats. Meanwhile... Lucky had been introduced to Shauna and Aja, the girls who formed the holograms along with Kimber. Lucky's really taken to you, Jim, said Shauna. She's been close by you all the time. Oh, <gasps> time! exclaimed Jim, staring at a clock on the wall. It's time that Jerrica Benton went to a business meeting. Jim touched her pointed red earrings and said, Showtime's over, Synergy. Next second... Jem had vanished, and standing in her place was Jerrica Benton, the smart career girl who was co-executive of Starlight Music. The red earrings were micro-projectors that formed a link with Synergy, an amazing computer that could produce the most incredible holograms. It was through Synergy that Jerrica could take on the guise of Jem, and she had taken on this secret identity in her bid to prevent Eric Raymond from taking control of Starlight Music. The sudden change in appearance seemed to startle Lucky. The cat jumped back from Jerrica and would not go near her. Strange, said Kimber to Jerrica. Lucky doesn't seem to recognize you. She only liked you as Jem. There was a knock on the door, and in came Rio, the group's road manager. Another batch of photographs for autographing, please. He began, but finished abruptly as he tripped over Lucky. As the girls picked Rio off the floor and gathered together the fallen photographs, they explained about finding Lucky. You sure that's her name? asked Rio. Perhaps it should be unlucky. Hey, that's not fair, protested Jerrica. She was only being playful. Uh, Jerrica? began Shauna, but the Starlight Executive continued talking to Rio. She's naturally inquisitive, said Jerrica. Uh, Jerrica? Shauna tried to speak again. And she's so sweet, Rio, continued Jerrica. Sorry to interrupt, said Shauna firmly. But that playful, inquisitive, sweet cat is pulling your hat to bits. Even Jerrica began to think that maybe Lucky wasn't quite so lucky after all. That afternoon, after Jerrica had become Jem, the girls were hard at work in the recording studios. Lucky, tired by her morning exertions, had curled up asleep in a corner. The buzzer went to let them know there was an urgent phone call for them. Aja took the call and came back looking very excited. There's a car outside Starlight waiting to take us to the TV studios, said Aja. 
There's been some last-minute changes in the lineup of the Jerry Carson Show. They want us to go on and sing a number. The Jerry Carson Show was a very popular TV program. It was a chance the girls could not miss. Lucky's definitely staying in here, said Jim firmly. The girls left the studio, leaving the sleeping cat in its corner. From his office, Eric Raymond watched the girls drive away in the car he had hired. He took his set of master keys and made his way down to the recording studios. This is too easy, he sniggered. By the time they realize they've been tricked, the misfits will have made their new single. It was almost an hour later when the furious girls returned to the Starlight offices. No one at the TV studios had any idea about what was going on. I'm sure this cheap trick is Eric's work, fumed Jem. But why has he done it? What nastiness is he up to now? Jem and the holograms couldn't believe their eyes when they saw what was happening in the studio. Eric Raymond, shaking and quaking like a jelly, was pinned in a corner with Lucky standing guard over him. P -p Please get that thing away! Sobbed Eric, shaking uncontrollably. I can't stand cats. They frighten me. <laughs> the girls burst out laughing. Eric had been startled to find the sleeping Lucky and had not managed to steal the demo tapes. Don't worry, Eric. Grinned Jem. Lucky won't eat you yet. At least not for a while. You were a lucky cat after all. Grin, Jem, to Lucky, after the petrified producer had been allowed to leave. Lucky snuggled up against Jem and purred contentedly. Still don't know why she likes you so much," said Shauna. "She hasn't taken to anyone else. It's obvious," said Jem. "It's 'cause I'm nice." The girls finished cutting their new single, then got ready for their evening concert at a nearby venue. Lucky was left in the girls' changing room when they went on stage. Relaxed and happy that Eric's evil plan had been foiled, Jem was in great form as she sang and danced. It was midway through the second number that the fifth member of the act came on stage. Jem could see that the audience had burst into fits of laughter. She turned round to see Lucky padding her way towards the center spotlight. A young girl from the front row jumped up in excitement. She called. Jem motioned the security men to let the girl come on stage, and Lucky jumped joyously into her arms. The girl obviously liked Jem because she had dyed her own hair the same color as the stars. No wonder Lucky liked you. Kimber smiled to Jem. Her owners modeled her appearance on you. Did you say Lucky? Asked the young girl in surprise. That's right, said Jem. We saw the letters L U C on her collar. It is Lucky, isn't it? No," said the girl. "It's Lucy." Well, she certainly proved to be a lucky cat for us," grinned Kimber. "She's cute, isn't she, Jem?" The pop star fondled the cat's ears and said with a smile, "I think she's just perfect."